Hey Vlad, do you know what's the most popular question on our Instagram from your followers? I don't know. So I'm telling you, that's a question about your rings that you personally wear. Which one of them? All of them. So really? if you could tell us a bit. Okay, let's start talking about blue sapphire. This is natural blue sapphire I found in Sri Lanka, um, I think 15 years ago. I found with the most uh, sophisticated man who I have a great respect, his name is Mr. Ajwad. And he is from a gem, uh, not gem cutting, but he's like a man from a, a historical gem Sri Lanka Muslim gem community family. His father won one of the biggest gem dealers in Sri Lanka. And uh, all of these uh, biggest dealers in Colombo these days, they all come, the ancestors, their parents, grandparents come from the Gol, from south of Sri Lanka. And they used to be like a small dealer and trader and miner in the southern Sri Lanka region. They used to uh, mine like a uh, interesting hessonite garnet in Mat Matara mine in this area, moonstones, a little bit sapphire, a little bit other garnets and they was trading for tourists as well for actually for nearly for more than a century and so my good friend Mr. Ajwat he I think uh, I would put the, him in the five or even three the most sophisticated and most knowledgeable person in Sri Lanka as I know he is uh, hitting like 65 these days. Uh, I knew this person for nearly more than 20 years. To me actually why I'm trying to tell about this blue sapphire and I spent already nearly five minutes to tell about the person because to me there is no stones without people. And actually the any stones in my collection, especially the one I wear or stones which I possess, they all somehow related to the people who I met in my life and to the people who um, <clears throat> who, the, who I met on the road or on the mines and who I bought stones from. So it's a personal memory on each and every stone. <laughs> And therefore, uh, this person, uh, I would say old guru from Colombo these days, he used to have just an opposite, uh, when I first visited his office, it was 20 years ago, he still used to have a tiny little office which he had for 30 years, just across the street from uh, on the gold road across the street from Indian High Embassy. Interesting thing, uh, he had a tiny little office and he had like a safe which was like a nearly 500 kilos weight. Old one from British, like from 1950 I guess. And he always, whenever I come and visit his office, he carry and bring a very selective stone which I really appreciate a lot. He never ran for big corporation like many other Sri Lankan dealers who I knew. And I knew pretty much all of them more or less closer or uh, or distance because I was buying in Sri Lanka stone since like uh, 1994 when the first time I came to Sri Lanka and my blue sapphire was actually originally was found near Ratnapura area it's a soft blue cornflower color which is extremely sweet and nice and then um, I choose this stone for um, it's interesting to say because I choose this stone for myself in the time when I was buying sapphire in the most. In these years, like 15 years ago, I was buying on each trip to Sri Lanka, I was buying not, I would not say hundreds of sapphire, I was buying them several hundreds of stone each time. And the reason was because they were simply available. There was plenty of stones was mined in this time in Sri Lanka and as well it was a very strong production was coming in from madagascar therefore 
supply was enormous and amount of bias was very limited. There was few buyer from New York. There was few buyers always from Bangkok. Well, I was one of them. And whenever I visit Mr. Rajwat, I sit on his table and he has a very, very old table. And just because his office was so, so tiny, it was one and a half by two and a half meters. And his table was slightly like one meter by 1.5 meter so there was a and the safe was so huge there was no space for my legs and whenever <laughs> i sit whenever i sit opposite to mr Ajwat, it was interesting situation uh, because uh, my legs always was stuck to this uh, oxidizing old table and I feel extremely uncomfortable so it was pretty much like a yoga asana my leg was spread and I was sitting squeezed this way and I was looking at the stones the table was good white uh, paper and the stones was lying down in those white envelopes which uh, Sri Lankan usually trade so I supposed to open thousands of those, those envelopes in order to buy a few stones and each time whatever I open the envelope and I found sapphire I like and just put them next to each other on the paper Tree. next to each other no it was just paper white paper because Mr. Ajwat is an old Sri Lankan old school dealer he was extremely stingy <laughs> on small things he used like a very old say he used a very old tweezers which was like a brown to yellow color because it was oxidizing heavily <laughs> in 30 years and as well uh, he used the same paper for many years so it was uh, you're right it was not really white it was kind of yellowish white so i put all of those sapphire which i chosen the best for me and i put them next to each other and it was a nice beautiful line of those sapphire which we have i still have uh, recorded those photographs with those interesting composition of sapphire like pink color yellow color white color and not really white but some of them was white with a pinkish or slightly bluish side and of course blue sapphire so that was one of the selection of the hundreds i bought that time in the meantime when i selected a bunch of those sapphire then i took a pencil in my hand and i asked mr Jawad the prices so pretty much he told me uh, this stone this price this sapphire this price and interesting thing the prices uh, what was quoted it was a price uh, many times not per carat it was per stone if I remember correctly and I put those prices and I see the value of the stone I see the beauty of those sapphires and I see the clarity and color. Good thing about selection of Mr. Ajwat, it was always stones was well selected already. He was the most picky buyer. He was always paying the premium to his supplier, but he always looked for specific stones. He has specific color for every blue sapphire. <laughs> That blue sapphire he hold, what called a silver lake, which is kind of light blue with in light intense blue sapphire, which you couldn't call cornflower, and uh, with a little bit uh, uh, brighter sparkle inside. He called them silver lake, and some of them he would call royal blue, the really intense blue, but without black in it and that he would call i guess cornflower blue sapphire and uh, this stone was six carat originally before my recutting and uh, i was thinking hello. hello hello i was thinking about price and of course i was surprised and shocked as usually for any good blue he quote the highest possible price at the time and that was kind of normal not only for him but for the big dealers because whenever you come across a beautiful really beautiful blue sapphire without color shift but pure blue in any light and without any time going to the dark side it's always kind of sweet blue it's always unaccessible 
and people asking very high premium for stones like this. And uh, this stone is six carat. Unfortunately, as you know, all blue sapphire and all corundum family stone, they have very strong specific gravity. That means that six carat stone doesn't look big. <laughs> it look actually relatively small. I have, for example, I have, for example, red spinel, which is three carat and six carat blue sapphire. And it doesn't look like a double size. It looks just probably 30 or 20% bigger than red spinel. Uh, a bit unfair uh, to the size wise, but what to do, but the amount of money you have to pay, it's a total amount of money for the whole stone, not just per carat is what the trade is offering. Um, so I choose this stone and I choose many other stone on the table in that time. And then oh. when I put a lot nicely together and I feel I'm very comfortable with the colors and very comfortable with the shape, clarity of course, I start negotiate with him every time. Oh, please. Mother, I, I will write. No, my paper cannot write. Huh? <laughs> this is my paper, only for me. <laughs> I offer with good heart, good luck. Take it. Don't, don't, don't hassle. Good, when you buy good stuff, don't, don't talk too much. I don't talk too much. Yes, sir. Our 68. token is big in German. Yeah, no? 68, five, please. No, no, no. No, no, no. Mr. 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 No, no, no. No, half the hand. No, no. And as soon as he sees that I choose like uh, not one or two stone, but I choose hundred stone, then his eyes start sparkling. And he's an older gentleman, he's actually much older than me, he's probably 17 or 18 years older than me. He was always, I was kind of tricked him on a bulk amount of business I was trying to negotiate. And he, he was very attempting to sell me all of those stones because he see amount of good stone I selected, so he see amount of uh, profit he has inside. So. I, I say, Mr. Rajwat, what the best price you can do for the whole thing? And let's go one by one and what the best price you can do here, here, here. So uh, before that, I already wrote original prices with pencil. Later on, he gave me discount prices. So I calculate total amount and I negotiate a bit down and we just rounded up total amount. That's how I get this stone. I think it's fabulous. It's gorgeous. Uh, honestly speaking, I would choose to have this blue sapphire not in oval, but in cushion, square cushion. But when it's come to the super gem blue sapphire, you don't choose the shape, you choose the stone. This stone I set in a white platinum and uh, with a yellow rim of a pure gold around so it's very soft it's going very nicely and i believe a yellow is going very well with the cornflower blue and platinum it's very soft and going very well with around my finger it's soft and it's kind of tightened up next to my finger i'm very happy with this ring it's been with me i would say more than 10 years i wear it daily i enjoy it daily and good news since 15 years i didn't see another stone like this one so it's always good surprise when you get a good stone you have it you enjoy it and just because it's rare the price is going up thank you guys mm -hmm.